we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading from the second book of Samuel. David returned from his defeat of the Amalekites and spent two days in Ziklag. On the third day, a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. Going to David, he fell to the ground in homage. David asked him, Where do you come from? He replied, I have escaped from the camp of the children of Israel. Tell me what happened, David bade him. He answered that many of the soldiers had fled the battle and that many of them had fallen and were dead. Among them, Saul and his son, Jonathan. David seized his garments and rent them, and all the men who were with him did likewise. They mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the soldiers of the Lord of the clans of Israel because they had fallen by the sword. Alas, the glory of Israel, Saul, is slain upon your heights. How can the warriors have fallen? Saul and Jonathan Beloved and cherished, separated, neither in life nor in death. Swifter than eagles, stronger than lions. Women of Israel, weep over soul, who clothed you in scarlet and in finery. Who deck your attire with ornaments of gold. How can the warriors have fallen in the thick of the battle, is slain upon your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. Most dear have you been to me. More precious have I held love for you than love for women. How can the warriors have fallen? The weapons of war have perished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken. O guide of the flock, O Joseph, from your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Rouse your power and come to save us. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. O Lord of hosts, 
How long will you burn with anger while your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in ample measure. You have left us to be thought over by our neighbors and our enemies mock us. Let us see your face, Lord, and we shall be saved. Please stand. our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came with his disciples into the house. Again the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them even to eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Nawawala na daw ng bait si Jesus. He's getting crazy. Nababaliw na. Nabubuang na. Pero bakit kaya tinawag siyang nababaliw ng kanyang mga kamag-anak nung siya ay umuwi sa kanila? Kung napakinggan po natin ang mga nakarang pagbasa, maiintindihan natin. Bakit? Ano bang ginawa ni Jesus? Ano bang nangyari? Di ba noong mga nakarang araw, napakinggan natin na si Jesus ay kasamang kumakain ng mga makasalanan, ng mga tax collectors, ng mga salot, tinaturing na salot sa lipunan. Ano pang ginawa niya? Nakipag-inuman siya kasama sila. Ano pa? Kinumpara ang mga alagad ni Jesus sa mga alagad ni Juan Bautista na hindi sila nag-aayuno. Pagkatapos sa araw ng Sabbath, sila ay namitas ng mga butil ng mga pananim. Nagpagaling siya ng mga may sakit sa araw ng Sabbath. At ang kanyang mga alagad na pinili, tax collectors, mga maiiniti ng ulo, mga mangingisda, mga ordinaryong tao. At yun ang napakinggan, ang nalaman ang mga balitang dumating sa kanyang mga kamag-anak. Kaya nga nung umuwi si Jesus, although he is gaining fame, sumisikat na siya. Pero anong sinabi sa kanya ng kanyang mga kamag-anak? Napabaliw ka na ba? Bakit? Dahil ang mga tinuturo ni Jesus, ang kanyang mga ginagawa ay hindi alinsunod sa tradisyon. Hindi alinsunod sa mga turo ng mga pariseyo. Hindi alinsunod sa kinagawian. And because of this, Other people are saying, He is giving disgrace to the family. Nagbibigay siya ng kahihiyan sa kanilang pamilya. Nagbibigay siya ng dishonor. Kaya, maski mga kamag-anak ni Jesus, kinakahiya siya dahil hindi nila maintindihan kung bakit yun ang ginagawa pa rin ni Jesus. Alam niyo po, when we are passionate about something, when we like to do something, pag gusto natin ng isang bagay, sometimes nakakagawa tayo ng mga bagay-bagay na unconventional, na pati ang sarili nating kamag-anak ay hindi nila maintindihan. 
kung bakit ginagawa natin ito. Siguro ang ilan sa inyo, nung ipinakilala ninyo ang inyong mga mamahalin, ang inyong mga pakakasalan, di ba, may mga kamag-anak o mga malapit sa inyo na sinabi, bakit yan? Di ba may mas mabuti? Di ba may mas maganda? Di ba may mas mayaman? Di ba mayroong mas matalino? Nasisiraan ka na ba ng bait? O kaya kapag may pinili kayong isang kurso, bakit yan ang pinili mo? Wala sa kamag-anak natin ang kumuha ng ganyan. Bakit yan? Nasisiraan ka ba ng bait? O kapag ikaw ay matagumpay na, ang dami ng kita, pero kinu, pero despite all those things, hindi ka naging masaya, iniwan mo ito, lumipat ka ng iba, nagsimula sa zero, sasabihin sa'yo, bakit mo ginawa yun? Nawawalan ka na ba ng bait? At yun din po ang iniisip ng mga kamag-anak ni Jesus. Maayos ka naman. Isa kang karpintero. Bakit hindi mo na lang ito itinuloy? Sana nagkaroon ka na lang ng asawa. Nagparami ng lahi. Matutuwa pa ang ating mga angkan. Bakit ang ginagawa mo? Nagpapahayag ng balita na hindi naiintindihan ng mga tao. Nasisiraan ka na ba ng bait? Alam niyo po, we cannot please other people. Meron at meron tayong masasaktan. Meron at merong may sasabi sa'yo. Meron at merong hindi papalakpak sa ginagawa mo. And there will be people who will say that you are out of your mind. Nababaliw ka na ba? Pero bakit? Bakit pa rin tuniloy ni Jesus ang kanyang pagpapahayag ng mabuting balita? Ang taliwas sa turo ng mga pariseyo, taliwas sa tradisyon, dahil yun ang tama, dahil yun ang mabuti, dahil yun ang kagustuhan ng Diyos. E eh, paano natin malalaman ang kagustuhan ng Diyos para sa atin? Kung ang ginagawa ba natin ay kagustuhan niya? Alam niyo po, hindi ko po alam. Nung pumasok nga po ako sa seminaryo, napatanong din ang nanay ko, sigurado ka na ba dyan? After high school, pumasok po ako hindi man lang po ako sinamahan ng nanay ko sa Manila. First time ko pong sumakay sa aeroplano ng mag-isa. Inihatid lang ako sa airport. Dahil akala ng nanay ko, hindi naman ako magtatagal. Uuwi ka rin. Sasabihin mo, magkamali ka. Tama po siya. Gusto ko pong umuwi pagkatapos ng anim na buwan. Dahil malayo, dahil nahihirapan ako sa aking pag-aaral, gusto ko nang umuwi. Pero sabi ng nanay ko, nasisiraan ka na naman ba ng bait? Di ba't gusto mo yan? At pagkatapos po nun, tumagal na po ako ng 15 years bago po ako naging pare. Hindi ko po alam kung bakit ako tumagal. Bakit? Kahit na anong sinasabi ng iba, tumagal pa rin ako. Siguro, napaka-akma ng salmo sa araw na ito. Lord, let us see your face and we shall be saved. Siguro sa mga ginagawa natin, kahit taliwas sa tingin ng iba, kahit akala ng iba, nababaliw na tayo. 
Siguro yun ang makapagpapatagal sa atin. Sa kung anong ginagawa mo sa buhay, kung ano man ang pinili mo, kahit mahirap, kahit na matagal, kahit akala ng iba, maling nagawa mo. Pero siguro, kapag nakikita mo ang mukha ng Diyos sa ginagawa mo, nagkakaroon ka ng direksyon. Nagkakaroon ka ng saya. Nagkakaroon ka ng kontento sa buhay. Tatagal ka. At hindi mo na iisipin kung ano man ang sabihin ng iba. Nawawalan ka na ng bait. Okay lang. Basta't nakikita mo ang mukha ng Diyos sa iyong ginagawa. Siguro minsan, kailangan din natin magpatingin talaga. Baka nga nawawalan talaga tayo ng bait. Baka nagkakasakit ka na nga talaga. Pero kung hindi man, kung negatibo man, ang tingin ng mga doktor, nasa tamang pag-iisip ka naman. At alam mo na nakikita mo na gumagalaw ang Diyos sa buhay mo kahit pinagtatawanan ka ng ibang tao. Sige lang. Tumuloy ka lang. Because God's, God's foolishness is greater than man's wisdom. And sometimes, we just have to deal with it. God's plan for us will always be the best, will always be the greatest, and will always be the good thing that might happen to you. Kahit pagtatawanan ka na, kahit akala nila mali pinili mo, But then, when you see God's face in your decisions in life, in your everyday life, makikita mong dahilan. Makikita mo kung bakit. Makikita mo na magiging masaya ka. Because that is God's plan for you. Kaya nga, ang ginawa ng Diyos dito sa lupa, naghahanap sila ng isang tagapagligtas. Pero bakit kailangan pang sundin ng Diyos ang nakasulat sa kasulatan, ang sinabi ng mga propeta, na siya, He will suffer to the point of death, even death on the cross. Hindi ba kahangalan yun? Hindi ba kabaliwan yun? And that foolishness that other people thought of is the greatest plan of God for us to be redeemed. Isang ganun lang, kaya ng Diyos tayo pagalingin. Kaya ng Diyos tayo sagipin. But then, He played with what we think is the wisest decision. Kahangalan po ng Diyos yun. Pero hindi natin maintindihan. Kahangalan ng Diyos na magpakababa to the point of giving His life, of being ridiculed, of being mocked, of being spit over, na pinagtatawanan. Pero yun pala ang nakapagbigay sa atin ng buhay na walang hanggan. And whenever we see God's face in our life, we will always find the right path. We will always do the right decision because we know that we are going and we are doing what is God's plan for us. And so we pray every day, Lord, let us see your face and we shall be saved. Let us see your face and we shall be saved.
प्लीज स्टैंड में Let us pray to the Father in heaven that we may learn from his son Jesus Christ what it means to serve. For every petition we shall answer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that we as a church may go out of our own worlds to serve others with self-effacing love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those in public office may give the best of themselves in serving the people instead of seeking their personal gain. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may show gratitude to those who render service to us in various ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That like Mary, we may be attentive to the needs of others instead of being too much concerned with our selfish ends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and the elderly may find respect and attention from their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions, the intentions of this Mass, and the intentions of the devotees and pilgrims of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary of Manawa, and for all those whom we promise to pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, it is not easy for us to help others when it is inconvenient to do. May we learn from Jesus to be available to anyone who seeks help and may you give us the strength to do so. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become our spiritual trend. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted to you, Lord. And may our sacrifice and your psyche stay be pleasing to you, Lord. Wash me. Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with your sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of the Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look in the loneliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with them in one chorus of exultation, exultant praise, as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Peace stand. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. He is mingling with the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring it in life for us to receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Peace new. In the healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the blood and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Please kneel for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all corrupt conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That a common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is a gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech you, Lord, your mercy, that we, who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary, may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Prayer for the blessing of the sick. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that, in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for the blessing of rosaries and other religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. May these rosary scandals, oils, and images, our pilgrims and devotees, be blessed and be made holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.